so first of all, your reaction to not only the settlement, but this donation to, to the charity helping victims? Very interesting indeed, isn't it? <laughs> so I think that he has very smart attorneys and a very smart PR team. I think that's a way to try to distance himself from the whole Epstein and Maxwell debacle. Um, obviously, he has suffered a great deal when, uh, when I say he, I'm referring to Prince Andrew. He has suffered a great deal in terms of losing his royal title, or he hasn't lost his title, but stepping away from his royal duties um, and being diminished as a member of the royal family. That's a huge deal. So I think that this was a very smart way to start to try to separate it. But obviously, most people look at settlement as some sort of admission of guilt. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about, because this statement was really carefully crafted to sort of shift the blame away from Prince Andrew and, mm -hmm. and put it towards Epstein, right? Um, so does it, does it kind of feel that he was absolved in some way? I personally, as an attorney, I don't look at it as being absolved. I look at it as a smart step in the right direction. Now that Maxwell's been convicted and Epstein obviously committed suicide, you know, it's time for him to separate himself. But absolution, I, I, mm, that picture you have up on the screen says otherwise, not to mention the fact that he made a large settlement. I think it's one thing if he felt victims' rights were important. Obviously, sex trafficking victims is an extremely um, horrendous situation that does need money and attention and, and efforts put into solving. Um, however, this was about him getting himself out of trouble. Yeah, I, I, I want to ask you also, is there any impact, do you think, on other related claims? Um, because uh, as we know, there were many, many victims uh, related to, to Epstein's ring. Oh, absolutely. And it's so unfortunate that due to his suicide in, in prison, he won't be able, those accusers won't get their day in court. You know, he won't have to be responsible for what he's being accused of. So I, I really hate that on behalf of the victims. So I think that this very well could open the door. Um, I, it's a number of young ladies whose lives apparently have been obviously very detrimentally impacted and in some cases pretty much ruined over what happened to them as young women. So it's it's very, very difficult situation. Um, there definitely needs to be a number of players who were involved who need to take responsibility. And that means with the checkbook, hopefully in a way that will start to address some of the ills that these young ladies suffered. Yeah, and I almost wonder if, you know, despite this, there could be a positive outcome in combating um, sex trafficking because even extremely high profile individuals like Prince Andrew are being held accountable. Absolutely. I think that's a step in the right direction. You know, it seemed that Epstein and his cohorts operated above the law uh, with no concern. You know, you had the Lolita Express and all types of other trappings that they took great advantage of. And it seemed to be sort of a kind of fantasy island type of situation in the worst way. So I think that when people see that these men are being held accountable, they're having to take responsibility for their actions. You know, you have Maxwell facing a prison term, then then start things can start to change and people won't engage in this type of predatory, horrendous behavior. Yeah, and, and the timing is interesting because, of course, he was set uh, to, to give some testimony, a deposition related to this case next month. Uh, so one has to imagine that has something to do with the timing of the settlement. Is that correct? Oh, I would definitely say so, especially a member of the royal family. I cannot imagine that the Queen's office would have allowed that type of deposition to move forward. And I'm quite certain, just my opinion, but I, in my humble opinion, I'm quite certain that the royal family and the machine surrounding the royal family had something to do with this. I don't know that Prince Andrew all of a sudden woke up and grew this great conscience towards his previous actions, but you know, who knows? I would say that probably was the interplay of both. Yeah, absolutely. I want to ask you about another high profile case that we're following. Attorneys representing the family of cinematographer Helena Hutchins announced that they filed a wrongful death lawsuit in New Mexico against Alec Baldwin, his production company, the film's assistant director and armorer. Hutchins was shot and killed on the film set of the movie Rust. Lawyers for her family announced the lawsuit filed in New Mexico in the name of Hutchins' husband, Matthew Hutchins, and their son, Andros, at a Los Angeles news conference. In the lawsuit, as you can see, names Alec Baldwin and others 
who are responsible for the safety on the set and whose reckless behavior and cost-cutting led to the senseless and tragic death of Helena Hutchins. Now, the complaint alleges, quote, Defendant Baldwin and the other defendants in this case failed to perform industry standard safety checks and follow basic gun safety rules while using real guns to produce the movie Rust with fatal consequences. At least three other lawsuits have been filed over the shooting, but this is the first directly tied to one of the two people shot. So once again, we have Tamara A. Walker joining us. Uh, what's your reaction to, to this wrongful death lawsuit emerging against Alec Baldwin? You know, I, I believe that it was expected. I think that obviously they named Alec Baldwin because he is a well-known Hollywood star with a lot of connections and money and all those types of things. But my personal opinion is that it's more on the film's production staff. The armorer, I know Hannah Gutierrez-Reed is the armorer for that film. And a lot of people have pointed to issues that she's had on sets in the past. So I think that naming Alec Baldwin, while it gets the headlines and it's sensationalized, the issues are more so with the production staff and the crew. That said, if Alec Baldwin is the one in charge here, um, isn't he sort of vicariously liable? Well, I mean, he was the one who actually held the gun that, that fired the shot. So, I mean, I'm not saying that I, I can't understand why they brought him. I'm just saying that in his role in that particular scene, handling the gun, he was relying on members of the crew. Um, I know he's given statements that he trusted the armorer for the film that the gun was, uh, you know, followed safety protocols and that this type of thing would not happen. I think it's difficult to be an actor, a producer, and, and, and be in these different roles without relying upon the crew whose job it is to make sure that these types of things are handled properly. And it's so unfortunate that it wasn't. Yeah, uh, I want to play a clip, another clip from uh, the attorneys for the family of hey, um, Helena Hutchinson. Let's listen. There are regulations and guidelines in place today that should prevent something like this from happening. But they need to be enforced. And had they been followed, this never would have happened. This is so rare that somebody would be shot on a scene when they're lensing it. There's nothing, there's no supposed to be live ammunition. It never should have happened, never. Yeah, I mean, so Tamara, I mean, it, it really should never have happened. That's true. Um, but what else do these attorneys need to do to, to prove their case? Well, they're off to the right start. They filed a lawsuit, and from what I've seen, it's, it's a well-written lawsuit. And the next step is they go through discovery, and, and that's when some of the documents get produced. So you can really start to get to brass tacks of who did what here and who should ultimately be held responsible. You know, you, when you have a lawsuit like this, you name a lot of parties, you name all the responsible people, the production staff and everyone else, and then it starts to narrow down as the information comes through. Well, as we know, these sorts of lawsuits can drag on for years. Um, in this case, what kind of timeline do you think we should be expecting? Oh, it, I think it's way too early to call it. Um, as I stated, it's a process that has to go through, and I wouldn't be surprised if perhaps a settlement was reached here. I mean, a young lady lost her life, and there's no question in how that happened. So as the discovery process wears on, I, I, I would not be shocked with that outcome. Yeah, so obviously, you know, when, when we're talking about um, civil cases like this, a wrongful death lawsuit, you know, a dollar amount is ultimately what's going to be requested by the lawyers. Um, what is going to be considered here in, in trying to pursue some sort of compensation? Well, great question. And I think a lot of people have that question. In a wrongful death, you have a, a number of factors. I know that this action was brought on behalf of her husband and her son, I believe she had a son. So you have the loss of her life to these two individuals. You cannot underestimate that impact. I mean, this, this gentleman lost his wife and a young boy is gonna grow up without a mother as a result of the actions from this production. And you know, how can you possibly put a dollar on, amount on that? Some ways that the court tries to address it is by looking at the person's age, their expectation, their earning potential, where they were earning at that point, um, their trajectory to earn more. 
All of these things are looked at. The husband would also have a loss of consortium claim, which is being without the comfort of his wife. And, you know, obviously the son, you know, there, it doesn't get much more sympathetic than a young boy without his mother. So all of those factors will go into consideration when a dollar amount is determined here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Tamara Walker, for your analysis. Um, up next in our Talkback segment, we asked you, at what point does a police department become responsible for police officers' actions? So